the last example of uh, a user interface is a gesture based interface now again as the name implies this is a type of an interface that depends upon gestures being done okay or gestures being given or used i should say to control the working of a device or to give a certain command to a device by making a certain gesture okay so this is one of the newest forms of user interfaces that has been uh, you know that has been around for some time now but having said this uh, there is constant improvement going on in all these types of interfaces i should say be a dialogue based interface or gesture based interface new newer gestures uh, will keep on coming up and people will keep on programming those newer gestures into their devices and uh, some of them are very commonplace we all know about those but others newer gestures can can keep on coming in and of course they can be used as as an input in the form of a gesture to a device so let's have a look at this brief description that is given here It relies on human interaction by movement of the hands fingers head or feet uses computer vision and image processing software okay makes use of computer vision and image processing software to recognize or to judge the gestures sensors such as camera pick up the movement so when it comes to a gesture based interface computer has to somehow record the the movements that you are making or the gestures that you are making and then translate those gestures or movements into into a command that the device can execute okay let's have a look at a more detailed description of it as it says gesture based interfaces rely on human inter interaction by the moving of hands head or even the feet gesture recognition allows humans to interface with the computer in a more natural fashion without the need of any mechanical devices if you are able to make use of your own gestures you know that is that is something that comes naturally to you you are more convenient in making those gestures and then if those gestures can be translated into a command for a device then of course you will you will find it very flexible and you would find it very convenient as well this type of interface uses techniques such as computer vision and image processing for example using our car example again using the car example again the following gestures can be used to carry out certain functions now in case of the dialog based interfaces as well we realized how dialog based interfaces may be used in controlling certain features of the car or giving certain commands same goes with the gesture based interfaces so let's have a look at you know what kind of gestures can be given as command it says rotating a finger clockwise rotating a finger clockwise near the radio will increase the sound volume so if you make this gesture okay either this or this rotating the finger the gesture would be taken as as if the user is giving a command to increase the volume yeah rotating it anti clockwise would 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 mean opposite you know reduce the volume opening the thumb and next finger will change the track being listed for example in the playlist now i do not really know how that gesture would be done because i haven't i haven't experienced it myself any idea by the way opening opening the thumb and next finger so is it like this and this 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 <laughs> okay all right well wh whatever the gesture is basically do you know something that uh, with these gestures 
there is usually a manual also available, a user's guide or a user's manual. So uh, I need to be familiar with these gestures to be able to use them appro appropriately for them to be translated into a proper command. So usually you're given manuals or user guides with the car or with, the, with that system, which you can sort of read through and get to know about a certain gesture. And of course the manual or, or the guide would contain pictorial evidence or pictorial representation of how you are supposed to perform a certain gesture. So when you, in real life, when you follow it exactly that way, of course, you'll be able to do it. And by the way, with the gesture-based interfaces where, you know, all gestures might not be very simple. Some of them might be a little complex, but, and, and to begin with, you might find uh, them a little difficult to execute, but with time, when you keep on doing, you know, doing it, you become used to it and uh, then it becomes commonplace you know then you do not later on really find it very difficult to use those gestures okay moving the foot under the rear bumper this is something that we have seen actually done as well probably uh, moving the foot under the rear bumper of the car automatically opens the boot lid so we have we have cars in our in our local scene as well i you might some of you might have such cars where uh, if you if you move your foot underneath the bumper okay there is a uh, there's there's an there's some sort of an optical I, I i believe optical vision or optical sensor that would take that as a command and it would result in opening up the up the boot gate or you know repeating the same uh, gesture would make it close is that right is that right or not Sometimes it would be probably a case of maybe a, an auto button given in the boot trunk that you can press to close it. Alternatively, maybe, you know, doing the same gesture would make it close. Is that right? Okay, anyway. Moving a hand near a window. Moving a hand near a window. Near a window switch automatically opens the window. So maybe even that can be done. All right. Okay. Let's see if we have any more examples of this. There are many other examples. Either a sensor or a camera is used to pick up the gesture and signal is sent to an onboard computer to carry out the required action. It eliminates the need for any array of buttons and dials on the dashboard. So it's the same thing. You know, if you we take the car example, you're not required to. Uh, focus your attention or divert your attention from the from the road to the dashboard looking for certain buttons to be pressed and so on uh, you can just simply perform the gesture while keeping your attention on the road and get the job done okay any other examples of uh, gesture based interfaces sorry okay uh yeah that's a good example of a console game xbox kinect it's a console game we know xbox is a console game and the kinect sensor with xbox allows us to play games using gestures how many of you have experienced it well, I'll also raise my hand because I've experienced it. I have played games using the Kinex sensor on Xbox. You and actually quite a few. And it's pretty interesting actually. Yeah. So have you noticed, have you noticed in that, that in order to get better accuracy with your actions that regarding the game that you're playing, the better your gestures are, or the more accurate, accurate your gestures are, the more accurate is the interpretation of the command. And that is how, you know, you are able to play the game more accurately. So getting used to the gestures is important. So basically there's this optical sensor in the front or a camera that uh, notes down the movements that you're making the gestures and then those gestures get translated into a particular command and that command is then executed in the game in the form of action. All right. So yes, this is another example. Good. Okay, let's quickly have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of dialogue based interfaces and gesture based interfaces. So let's go over the advantages and disadvantages of dialogue based interfaces first. Advantages first, 
no need for a driver to take their hands off the steering wheel understood yeah in a home very useful for people with disabilities because many tasks can be carried out by spoken words only so yeah where we you know we were talking about the fact that it makes people lazy it may also come as a blessing for people who have restricted movement yeah if i it's, it's not easy for me to get up and move move around how convenient would it be if i'm able to control certain things or get certain things done by just sitting in one place and you know verbally instructing uh, devices to perform a task how easy would that be yeah for for physically challenged people oh really <laughs> okay okay well so th yeah that 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 is probably that is a bit debatable in the sense that uh, uh, well yeah you can say that it uh, it suits it suits physically challenged people more or it is this technology is very very effective for them in the sense that they are not able to do things otherwise but this te the technology gives them the ability to be able to do it easily yeah and yes then when it comes to generally facilitating the the mankind you know then of course it can be used by anybody for the sake of convenience yeah you know actually how can we how can we look at it we can look at it in a way whereby we can say that it is always better to to adopt a balanced approach you know we we've heard we've heard this many times that too much of anything is bad yeah so yeah there's there's, there's a reason for it because it may affect or impact you uh, in a negative way i should say doing something you know too much of it too much of anything is bad let's put it that way so if at all we have to use technology for uh, to facilitate ourselves okay or to uh, for for our convenience well we should use it to a point where it does not affect us negatively in any way yeah yeah sometimes well you can you may make use of it on other occasions you know you may choose to do things differently it says that you know you're looking into the, into the fact that i do not want myself to be to become a slave of technology where if the technology is not there or it is not around i do not know how to function that would be bad okay so it's better to 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 adopt uh, a balanced approach yes sorry come again yes yes that is that is what what i mean when i say you know one should adopt a balanced approach yeah okay moving on to the next advantage possible to use as a security feature because voice recognition could be used to identify a person do you know that even voice recognition is something which is also being used as a, a security feature with devices where a device would unlock or it would authorize you to do something only if uh, you activate it by giving a command in your own voice and if the voice is not recognized then you will not be authorized are you getting what i'm saying okay yeah so that's an advantage what are the disadvantages still unreliable with many commands not being recognized or needing to be repeated several times especially if there is background noise now one thing with with dialog based interfaces or voice command systems is this that they are ideally supposed to be operated or used in a quieter environment if there is too much noise around or background noise then that might interfere with your command and might not uh, make the device understand the command properly to be able to act upon it yeah so this this could be one thing another point that has been given here is is about is about uh commands being spoken properly when you when you say them you you actually speak the words properly 
for them to be recognized properly by the by the interface by the voice recognition system because if it is not the same then the system may not understand the command and may not be able to act upon it yes 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 that's true that's true so yes with with voice command systems you have to be proper you cannot be like in a hurry because in a hurry as as you're saying you might skip a few words or you might might not pronounce a word properly which uh, the device might not be able to then understand properly so that's very true okay can be quite complex to set up well not easy such technology is not easy to create it is not easy to program okay it's not that it is not uh, always very very easy to use it effectively although i should say that that uh, whatever whatever shortcomings that there are in such systems is being overcome very speedily and now we have systems that are very accurate okay but still there is improvement needed so uh, but also at the same time this type of a technology is not easy to create it's expensive it requires special expertise special knowledge special type of programming okay special type of hardware equipment even you know to uh, make sure that such systems work efficiently user needs to know which commands can be used so again there's a specific set of keywords or command words that you have to use in order to get certain things done and if you do not use them then they are not taken as the 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 appropriate or the correct command ji beta yes yes i i think i i said that that uh, it is yeah it is it is not easy to create and it is also more expensive to create the kind of technology needed Okay. Lastly, quickly going over the advantages and disadvantages of gesture-based interfaces. So advantages first: replaces mechanical input devices. No physical contact required. Yeah. Very natural interface for a human operator, as we were just talking about it a while ago. That uh, you know, uh, gestures that you make. kind of come naturally to you and you make those gestures through through your hands or through your arms which are part of part of your body so you feel it very convenient to be able to use your uh, your hands and all to be able to give certain gestures no training needed to interface to interface with the computer um yeah you can say that that you know there's no particular training needed to use a particular device on the computer it could be an input device or whatever but having said that there is some sort of training still needed to be able to perform the gestures right and i was just talking about it even with that example of xbox kinect uh you would have noticed that when you play a certain game it first shows you shows you uh i would say yeah it 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 gives you a help okay and with that help feature what it does is it shows you the kind of gestures that you are supposed to make the help feature okay or the guide it instructs you how you know how to perform the gestures and then it also makes you practice them before you could use them in the game and once you have practiced them or perfected them and you use them the same way in the game then you know you you have a better chance of uh you know making those gestures correctly and uh, of course you will be able to play the game more accurately all right looking at the disadvantages possible for unintentional movement to be picked up well there is an outside chance of that uh unintentional movement a movement that was not intended to be made in a certain way it just kind of happened differently and somehow the system picked up as a command and did something on it so that is what it is only works fairly near to the camera or sensors maximum range is of about 1.5 meters even with with that kinect sensor example i think we found a good example 
in the connect sensor to be able to discuss all these points yeah you can stand only at a certain distance and within within the within the range of, uh, of or within the proximity of the sensor okay in terms of how far you are and you know what what is the range on the sides kind of a thing you know you cannot you cannot move out of sight of the sensor and then of course the distance also matters lastly may only accept a limited number of movements for example it may take several attempts to find out exactly what finger movements are recognized so yeah not only that with other types of gestures as well it is not very easy always to come to terms with the kind of gestures that you have to use you may have to practice them a bit but as i said earlier as well with a bit of practice you can you can perfect those gestures and then later on you would you know you would not face as much of a difficulty in operating uh, you know any device through those gestures as you might might have faced right at the very start when you were not really used to those gestures all right okay is this all clear any question regarding uh, either the dialog based user interface or the gesture based user interface is it clear okay so uh, the advantages and the disadvantages are very important with the all types of user interfaces be it cli gui uh, dialog based or gesture based because that is what does get get asked in the exam all right this, so this is one pet question that usually does come in the exam where you are asked to uh, you know compare any two types of interfaces in terms of how they work and their specific advantages or disadvantages or it may, may be a question in isolation where you have been asked to just simply list down the advantages and the disadvantages of a particular type of user interface all right all clear okay very good